This video is going to look at Evernote. Now, in these technological times, you need a place to collect all your content. And Evernote is the perfect place to do that. And you can clip web pages with Evernote just by clipping the URL, clipping the entire web page. So think of it as bookmarks on steroids that you can access from any device. You can copy and paste text from various places, throw in your miscellaneous notes and to-dos, set up a note for everything you want to consistently aggregate, email your photos, web pages, sections of web pages to your Evernote email address, tweet to your Evernote account, post to Facebook from Evernote, record audio notes while you're researching your next big electronic purchase like a TV all the different prices. Record a video note using your eyesight camera or your webcam or your camera on your tablet or uh, iPads. Uh, Evernote can be accessed on any device, on the desktop, or mobile, so PC, Macs, iPhones, iPads, Android devices and tablets, there's an app for all of them. And everything is synced to your Evernote account. It's easy to find things using keywords or just being smart with the way you set up your notebooks and notes within Evernote. And in this tutorial, I really want to go through all the different ways of using Evernote. So in effect, that you could become paperless. So what can you use Evernote for? I have got a, a list that I've collected on 100 uses for Evernote, and I'll put a link in the description on how you can actually get a hold of this, just to give you some ideas and some inspiration because it's uh, unlimited so this is there remember it's there as we go through Evernote and you're thinking about what you can use it for uh, think of this list so let's look at where you start so you need an Evernote account and Evernote.com it's a free account and it, a free account will give you a limited amount of updates per month and it resets every month so there it's usually adequate but if you start to use Evernote quite frequently then you might want to go premium which is only about five dollars a month the best five dollars I've ever spent uh, you you can get Evernote for the tablets so Android tablets iPads you can get Evernote apps for phones Android and iPhone you can get Evernote applications to download for your desktop computers PC and Mac every one of those will access your online Evernote account so once I sign in and I've already signed in so this is my Evernote account and some of the uh, the notes that I've got up there uh, everything that I do will eventually come back to this central account so if I'm out taking a photo of my next big TV purchase and I email it to my Evernote account, it will come into this online Evernote account. Uh, if I want that to be available on my iPad or another computer, then on my iPad, there's an Evernote app on the iPad where I will synchronize and all the content from my online Evernote account will be pushed down to my uh, iPad. And in another video, I will look at how to use Evernote for the iPad. Uh, the, let's go back to, if you want to download Evernote for your particular platform, there is a link here. You get Evernote, it's free, well, so, which will actually take, it to, take you to the appropriate page, or there is a, a more specific page. Evernote.com forward slash download, where you can actually download for all the different devices so it works on many many devices all of them work together they all synchronize together they all uh, end up being uh, emanating from your online account uh, what I'm going to demonstrate today is how to use Evernote on the desktop client for Macs and uh, the same program for Windows is virtually the same apart from the command so uh, command in for a new note would not be the same command for Windows but essentially it's the same. So once you've signed up, you can check your settings by going up to the menu bar up here, the drop down arrow, settings, and just to see what you actually have available, what um, your email address is. So when you set up, you actually get provided with an email address. 
So I can put that email address and add it to my contacts. And then when I'm and, and add, that, add that to my phone, my iPad, so that when I'm actually out somewhere and I want to send myself something to my to my Evernote account, I can email it either a web page, a clipping of a web page, a photo, an audio note, a video note, and email it to myself. I can also tweet notes, and I've linked my Twitter account to Evernote, and so I can send tweets directly from whatever Twitter application I'm using and they will appear not only on my Twitter timeline, but also in my Evernote as a note. Uh, I'm using the premium version of Evernote. So I have a subscription which costs me $5 a month, and that gives me uh, more uh, uh, data limits. So I have a gigabyte. There is uh, actually a, a page here which will give you reasons to go premium, and you might find that you find this would be a valuable way to use it. So evernote.com forward slash premium would give you some reasons why this might be a good idea. And there are, there are quite a lot of them, and I haven't explored all these, but my main reason for doing it was I get more uh, notes, and I also get uh, a bigger data limit. In the basic account, your data limits are provided here. So you, whilst you get 100,000 notes, there is a limit on the size and there are some limits on how many tags, and for most people this would be adequate. Know that premium is available once you start to, to use this and you find you need more. Um, subscription is $5 a month, which I think is the best $5 I've ever used. Now in the settings, you can change your, your personal settings, you can change your password, you can indicate within the applications uh, tab here which uh, applications are linked to your Evernote account. So I'm using a, an app on the iPad called DocScan. Uh, and another one on the iPad, for it, which is a scanner, so I can actually scan notes and send them up to, to Evernote. And what have you connected? So I've connected my Facebook account, my Twitter account, my Google Plus account to my Evernote account. And it also gives you purchase history. Uh, if you were running out of um, data limits, you could here increase upload allowance. So if you're on the, the basic or the free one or the premium, and I've used my whole gigabyte um, allowance within the month, and I still have you know, a long way to go. I could just purchase a one off uh, allowance. So for $5, if I'd used up all my allowance, I could go in here and, with the credit card details, purchase another gigabyte just to, to tide me over. I've found I don't need to with the premium, that one gigabyte is plenty. So that is settings. Back to the notes. Actually, there was a link here I could have done. Uh, all my notes that I have either uploaded here or synced from my other devices will appear here, and we'll go through um, that shortly. But these are all the, the tags that I've used down here on the left to find notes and notebooks. And look at that shortly. Um, what I'll start to do now is actually go to the desktop version of Evernote and we'll look at how you use that because the online one I don't find is terribly useful in terms of finding information. It's a good repository for all the notes, but the actual apps, the desktop applications are much more user friendly and very productive in what they can do. So this is Evernote for the Mac, and this is the interface. And we're just going to look at the moment at what we see on that interface. There is the note that I have, 100 uses for Evernote. And down on the left here are all the different notebooks. So ways of organizing your, your notes are to put them into notebooks. And in one notebook called, um, say, Editing and Proofread which is a, a course I'm doing, are three notes which will actually uh, help me in the work that I'm doing, so proofreading marks. And rather than just have them listed in, a, in one big organised workbook, I've put them into specific notebooks and given them a tag. So this is the notebook that this particular note is filed under, and these are the tags. So I can search if I'm looking for my proofreading marks, I can do a search for proofreading, search for the tag, search for the notebook to find that note. 
a series of notes and that will be later on we'll look at searching and you can you can save searches to, to save uh, doing them over and over again so I have a search here for all notes that don't have any tags and these are the notes that I haven't tagged yet and if you can look at, at, at this one here this particular note here is in a workbook but it hasn't got a tag so it's, it's something I've found I've emailed it to myself whatever and I've done nothing with it uh, up here on the top left is your account so I could then click on that and uh, add a new account or get my account information so it gives me the same information that I have where I, by going to evernote.com tells me how long I've got before my next month's subscription comes how much I've used what my email address is in case I keep forgetting it gives me the opportunity to add it to the address book now I'm using a Mac so it's going to add it to the contacts app whatever platform you use it will be different for that um, backward and forward syncing so once I've actually put a note into uh, my desktop once I might have clipped a web page and created a note uh, it's going to stay that note will stay local on this machine only until I synchronize and by doing that and see down here this is now synchronizing everything on my desktop version of Evernote back to my evernote.com account and then uh, it, it if I was using Evernote on my iPad, I would need to sync to Evernote.com on my iPad. And there's again another little, just a little button you press so that everything becomes synchronized. If you don't do that, it's just local. Uh, usage, so again, we'll just give you an idea about how much you've used of your monthly data limit. Um, trunk, I think it's just a, another means of browsing the Evernote catalog of of um, applications so it's not something I ever use but it's these are the different apps that work with Evernote like a blog we like to use that new note so you can do a new note from from the menu here you can also do a new note from the file new note and the for a Mac it's the command n for the uh, sh the keyboard shortcut uh, or you can no, you can't. Uh, deleting a note. So if I wanted to delete this one, I can highlight the note and hit the delete. Uh, all notes show all the notes. So instead of having them just show up in notebooks, I can have them all uh, show up from uh, showing all notes. Uh, the way you view your notes. So there are three ways to view the notes. I'm currently using the snippet view. And the snippet view would give you just a little bit about the actual note here. And in the in the reading pane on the right here, it actually shows the whole note on the right hand side. Uh, this one is a list view, which lists all the different notes when they were created, plus the actual note underneath it. I don't use that one at all. This one is the card view, I think. You can sort of see up here, this is the card view. This is the other way to look at them too. List view, snippet view, card view. This is the card view. So it just shows every one of the, the notes as a little card. And uh, on the right hand side, you have that reading pane. It takes up a bit too much space for me. So I like them this way, the snippet view. And then you need to look at, there's a list of them all here. And you know, if I'm in the show all notes, all notes, all notebooks. So 84 notebooks showing all the notes, all notes. And they can be, this is the, all of them here. Then I can decide how do I want them sorted. I've got them sorted by title at the moment. Uh, and within that, shown in groups. So they're shown in alphabetical groups. So there's all the A's by title and the B's. Now I can turn off groups. They're in alphabetical order, but they just uh, take a bit longer to find. So they're just one big list. Putting it into a group, at least I'm separating all the different letters of the alphabet. So now all the C's can be found by the C, and it tells me how many notes I've actually got in the C's. Uh, there are other ways you can sort it by date created, or date updated, or the size of them. So there the different ways of sorting your notes, and you might find that you just want to find the most recent notes, so you could just, for a few minutes, uh, sort them by date created, so that they then 
go from the highest to the lowest. So the most recent ones, 23rd of, of October, uh, down to the oldest. So we can go all the way down to November uh, 2011. So in some cases you might just look, might be, you know, there's a note you know, you you know you sort of uploaded it maybe July this year, but you can't remember what it's called. That may be the reason that you do that. Uh, I tend to leave it sort by title. Um, what else is there? There's a search up here. So once you're searching for notes, I wanted to search for, I mean, all notes, I wanted to search for my proofreading. It's going to come up with all my proofreading notes here. And particularly when you scan notes, it actually scans the text in the note, does some OCR. It's quite effective. In this particular note, it was just some web page that I've got. Uh, another note is something that I actually scan. So everything, um, it's looked for proofreading note, uh, a proofreading tag, which is this one, proofreading notes. This is page five of them. There's the notebook that they're in. It's searched for the tag and it's come up with everything that has proofreading in it. So search can get some quite sophisticated searches and you can uh, share those, uh, save those searches. Uh, anything else in the interface you have here or a list of all your notebooks. So if you're looking for a particular notebook, you can find it uh, here. So I might be just looking for my sketch notebook, which uh, will have everything that I have captured using the application sketch is synced up to Evernote so you've got a backup of all your images. You can find all your tags so if you're looking for anything on cyber security it's like a filter. It will filter out all the notes. Same as, to, as doing here searching for tag by going to tag um, cyber security. It will do the same thing. You notice that it's looking for anything that has the, the word cyber security and actually shows the word there. So that Search for tag, you can do it up there, or you can actually just find it here, find a tag, just by searching through all of your tags and looking for anything that that tag will find. Uh, the same with web clips. So what have you actually clipped from the web? So if you know you've um, used the web clipper in the browser to clip a web page or a portion of a web page, you can find them all that way. It's another way of filtering. Anything that's come from a mobile device, you find here. Any file that you've attached. So these ones are actual uh, files that have been scanned and attached as a note. Uh, or you can go back to all notes. So down at the bottom here, there's a couple more shortcuts. So the plus is another way to do a new note, a new tag, a new notebook, and the cog will either hide or show various things. So I've now hidden notebooks. Now I've hidden tags. Now I've hidden, I don't think you can do anything else. Save searches, can't, can't move anymore, but it, it, there's sort of nothing there now. But I want them back, put them back in there because I find that that's a quick way of filtering. Save searches are in here, I can close it up. So in the tags, I can close them up. I don't want to use so much space and open them up when I need them. Shared, you can actually share your notebooks publicly or you can also share them with a few people. And these are just some of the notebooks that other people have shared that I can access. Uh, and later on, we'll show you how to actually share a notebook. The 100 uses for Evernote that I'm going to use is going to be put into a shared notebook you can use. All right, that's all for, for this stage. The next video, we're going to look at actually creating a note.